Now, once we've got that process and we're moving on, let's, let's talk about the second scenario. Second scenario is brand new company, never had an accountant before, didn't have any business before. This is a fairly common scenario. In this case, you're going to have to create the chart of accounts, okay, from scratch. You can't ask them, tell me what the chart of accounts is. They don't know. They might not know an asset from a liability. Certainly probably doesn't, doesn't know an asset from a sales account or whatever. It's going to be up to you to create that. Now, you have three resources, don't you? You've got the previous practice sets that we've done in class. You can utilize those. So if you get a gas station, go back and look at Barry's Gas and Groceries. These practice sets were created after real-life companies, okay? So there's a chart of accounts that you can use. Uh, we're going to deal with other companies during the next. So you've got your choice there, okay? You've got the practice sets. You have certainly... You've got in your book on page 2.2, .2, if you want to turn to that, you've got a list of accounts that's fairly exhaustive. You can look through that, just identify which accounts you think the company's going to need. Now, this is not uh, etched in stone. Whatever you come up with can be changed, but you want to go in so that you look like you've thought through this, okay? Or the third one is certainly you've got us. You've got access to us, and we will be glad to help you through this process. And so... Those three resources can help you create the chart of accounts. It's really not difficult. If you, for instance, were to call me and say, in fact, I had this happen with one of our previous students. He called up. He has a brother in a different state who owns an ostrich leather tanning factory. Okay? That's an unusual type business to have. I just had him turn to page 2.2 .2 in the books. And we just went down. He knew enough about his brother's business that we were able to identify the accounts that we think he would need. And, of course, he can adjust them. He can add accounts, delete accounts as we go. But you start there. What's the second step when it's a brand-new company? It's First of all, it's to determine the starting balances. But what are the starting balances in a brand-new company? Zero, right? So you're going to start out with zero there. However, might there have already been transactions going on? Sure. He might have been using, he might have been paying costs out of his personal ch uh, checking account, you know, and a lot of costs. He might have been buying some inventory, might have been buying some equipment, spending a lot of money out there, but he just didn't feel like he needed, he had, really hadn't started the business yet, okay? In which case, you tell him, I want you to go through your personal checking account and just on a sheet of paper, make a list of every check or deposit that you have made related to this business. Just make a list. It doesn't have to be fancy. Just give me an idea of the amounts and what it was for, okay? And then once you get that piece of paper, you're going to sit down with it and you're going to try to lump things together. You're going to take all the office supplies, add up all those and put those in one number, and you're going to take all the inventory purchases and put that in another number, equipment purchases and so on, and then you're going to make an entry. And then entry is going to debit office supplies expense and inventory and equipment and all the different accounts and it's going to be a credit to owner's investment, okay? And that's that first entry. Very simple to get you going, okay? Okay, once you have that done, you're ready then to start entering the transactions for the following month. And you just start entering the sales, the checks, all the different deposits and so forth that you have.